hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name is <coughs> coffee croaky voice Jason Newland in my big black squeaky chair sipping on a cold can of cocoa cola I'm timing myself with my iPhone so that I know roughly how long I've been talking for and this is going to be a let me bore you to sleep recording please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and when you are able to happily be bored so with these with these sessions they're different each one's different they've all got commonalities I mean it's still my voice and you know sometimes I'll talk about something about my life uh, sometimes I will focus on you know relaxing or some kind of sleep you know thingy a few suggestions maybe here and there and other times I will just make up stuff as I go along this is going to be one of those such times and I'm probably going to tell a story I'm just going to make up a story and tell it and that's it really so the idea behind this is that you listen to me you listen to the boring story you start to zone out background sounds you start to zone out feelings that you may have had you start to zone out from thoughts that were in your mind before you decided to listen to my boring story and then you're focusing solely on the story on my voice and because the story is so boring then you s find yourself very likely just drifting off to sleep so I will say goodbye at the end of the session but I won't I don't know I won't start shouting or anything to wake you up because that would just be that would be a bit silly really I think you know I'll start banging a big bell at the end God, that reminds me and it's not really that relevant but went to a Buddhist retreat I've been on a few Buddhist retreat centers uh, retreats over the years not for quite a while <laughs> and I actually there was one where we were in, all in dormitories sometimes little rooms with maybe four people basically prison cells really I suppose and early in the morning like six o'clock someone would come in and put their hand open the door put their hand through and ring a bell I mean a proper you know those like hand bells that you um, is it hunchback and Notre Dame kind of bell I don't not not a church bell well like, kind of like a church bell but without the ropes or the church so yeah that was uh, didn't find that to be the most pleasant way to start the day so I thought I'd do a story so once upon a time it's uh, there was this man and 
he lived in a small room in London so he lived in London in a small room and it was just moving in so he hadn't actually moved in yet but he was officially he was living there but he didn't you know he paid the deposit on the room and he hadn't actually moved in yet so he he was already living there but he didn't move in until the you know the Tuesday or it might be in the Wednesday or may, actually maybe he paid the deposit on the Wednesday but he moved in on the Saturday or the Sunday you know that's something like that and I wish I'd started talking about mermaids mermaids would have been a better story anyway I'll stick to this and moving in you know moved all his things in he had he didn't have much most of his stuff was in black bin liners you know like refuge bags um, they weren't actually they hadn't been used as refuge bags he didn't empty a bin empty all the rubbish onto the kitchen floor all the eggshells and bits of rotten meat and stuff and then start putting his clothes and his you know books and stuff in there that, that, that didn't happen they were clean black bags he might have had to double them up because not all black bags are particularly strong or thick um, and he didn't really have you know a huge uh, amount to invest in this new adventure of his so moving to London from a small town elsewhere out outside of London still in the southeast of the country but not not in the north not in the west not in the east not really well, kind of the south but more southeast not in the northwest not in the north east is there a north south I don't think there can be a north south because it's either north or south but there can be a north east and a north west I suppose there can't be a north north and he didn't live in the west or the west north or the west you know the west doesn't seem to have any other thing so you've got the northeast you've got the southeast the northwest and the southwest you haven't got a north south and there isn't a south north and the east doesn't seem to have an east north or an east west or an east south so south north east west west east yeah so but he, he lived in roughly the area the kind of area that uh, London was but not in London itself because there's a quite a difference between living in a town a small town outside of London than actually living in London yeah very much difference so I think the town that he lived in previously to moving to London possibly held about 50 50,000 people maybe a little bit more but about 50,000 I suppose compared to London that 
has maybe 12,000, 12, 12 million, sorry, 12 million people. 12,000 people. Imagine if London had 12,000 people, there'd actually be the right amount of space. <laughs> people actually had the right amount of space that they needed. And every, most people would probably still be a housing shortage. Anyway, this isn't about politics or social economics. So, where are we? So we moved into this place from a small town into London and it moved to the east end of London. So London has a bit like the like a compass. So you've got North London, you've got South London, there's East London and there is West London. Then I suppose you've got North East London, North West London, but no North South and no, no North North. So South London, you've got South London, I suppose maybe South East London, South West London, no South North London and no South South London. East London there's doesn't seem to be an East South London or an East West London or an East North London and no East East London. And I forget what the other one is. East, South, North, West. West, East, West, South, West, West, North, West, North. So yeah, anyway, London's broken up into areas just like Everywhere is really, isn't it? I mean, I suppose even if you if you poured a yogurt onto um, a plate, you know, some kind of flat surface, it's technically it's got areas it would sort of move around, and it'd be you could say, well, that's the bottom part, that's the top part of the yogurt. That's the, the left side, so that's south, north, west, east, you know, so it's, I'm not saying that London's like a yogurt that's been poured onto a, a savoury dish or an ashtray. I don't even know if you can even buy ashtrays anymore. If you can, you, you wouldn't be able to get one with yogurt in it. Maybe that's a, a marketing tool that's not being used to its full potential because with the smoking bans and less people um, indulging in that particular sport there must be a lot of ashtrays in storage that were built and created in, I don't know, an ashtray company made by an ashtray machine I don't know I get I, I don't know why I've got the idea of um, like Santa's little helpers just making ashtrays banging out the metal and just, I suppose ashtrays aren't that Christmassy are they if they were made colourful and maybe a little bit of mistletoe the mistletoe isn't necessarily Christmas, is it? But I, well, it is. But it, I do like mistletoe. Well, I don't like mistletoe. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I, I don't really. I don't have strong feelings about mistletoe. Really. But maybe those ashtrays that were being in storage that perhaps are not being sold anymore perhaps they could be sold as 
yogurt dishes, yogurt trays, instead of ashtrays, yogurt trays. And the little bits where the cigarettes used to be in, you know, the little dent, dents in the side where cigarettes used to be able to be left, you can have that for spoons, for the yogurt. Or maybe you could have a really big ashtray or yogurt tray and have four spoons and it could be shared in a restaurant. So there could be perhaps even more than just yogurt, perhaps ice cream or chocolate eclairs. or blancmange or prune pudding you know delicacies lard bread and lard one then always used to say to me she said uh, when I was young we used to have bread and lard I said, yeah, and for me that's a conversation stopper, what was I supposed to, I couldn't add anything to it, I mean once I thought maybe I should do a little dance, do a little tap dance or something, um, as a, a response because verbally I had nothing to offer about lard and bread and dripping dripping why is it called dripping? because it dripped okay so dripping yeah, dri dripping sandwiches because the dripping is called dripping because it dripped so why is marmalade called marmalade? why is it not called just lays there doesn't do anything doesn't drip mind you marmalade it doesn't so much drip it falls down doesn't it in a, a lumps it's, it's like a you can imagine a, a cow that's been left out in the sun for too long and milking a cow and it's the milk's all gone off and it's just squirting out in lumps of you know like old milk that's been left in the fridge too long or maybe it's been left out of the fridge for too long and you've got the, the udders of the cow and it's just bits of I was going to say porridge but you know I suppose it would look a little bit like porridge I imagine that though imagine if you imagine a cow the produced porridge you could get a cow reproduce it and you could sell them to every old age pensioners home you know like a residential home where um, elderly people live and you could just basically yeah, that could be good, couldn't you? You could just have the cow standing on the table and they could all be sitting around the table while the cow's on and they can all just help themselves to an udder each. wasn't what I was expecting to say but all of others so the man who moved to London East London let's call him Thomas and uh, when he moved in there he introduced himself to the landlady and 
she said, oh, by the way, what, what's, is, is your name's Tom? He said, no, my name's Thomas. And she said to him, hmm, don't most people call you Tom? And he said, no, people call me Thomas. And do you know why that is? And she said, no, I don't know what, why that is. Because she had a, kept changing her accent. And he said, it's because that's what my name is. And then he walked up the stairs. And then he turned around and he came down the stairs. And he said, I'm sorry. She said, that's okay. So, you're okay for me to call you Tom? He said, no, my name's Thomas. So why are you apologizing for then? He said, well, I just fired. And uh, I didn't realize how bad it was until I got upstairs and I, I could just feel that it was, yeah, it was, it was a bad one. Um, if you if you if it hasn't reached you yet, it, is, it will. And when it does, you'll hopefully you'll accept my apology before you know. And don't phone an ambulance. Nothing like that. It's it's fine. It's just a standard natural reaction to being called Tom. And she said to you. You really, every time someone calls you Tom, you you let out a little bit of, uh, you know, gas. And he said, yeah, I do. It's, uh, it's just one of those things, really. She said, well, out of interest. How off, oh, oh. And she just, she just ran, and she just jumped through the window, and she kept running. It's like she just, just thought, oh, the smell, the smell, and she just ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. And he didn't know what to do. Luckily, they were on the ground floor, so there's no, no physical, you know, everything was fine. But just, he was a bit astonished because. Well, she had a, a walking stick and she was very elderly, it seemed. But it's like there was a. It's like the smell brought her back to life, gave her that extra energy that gave her the opportunity and just. It, and he thought, you know what? My fart, my fart is just turn back the hands of time for her physically. And she's running like a teenage girl. She's running like someone at school, full of energy. I mean, she was jumping over horses. And that's amazing, she was jumping over horses. And he, he couldn't believe it. And where did the horses come from? This is London. What? Why are there horses walking around the streets? But then he remembered that wasn't really part of the story, so he could just move on to the the next bit without really focusing on the horses part. But he struggled a bit, you know. He's, he's, the horses bit doesn't make sense. I mean, it's kind of, I suppose, a bit humorous that a 97-year-old lady from where, I don't know, wherever she was from, um, Bournemouth or Newcastle or somewhere like that, I don't know, and she jumped over a horse after jumping out of the window.
and he could see her in a distance because luckily he had a he always carried a telescope around with him so he set it up and he could see her and he could see her in the distance climbing a mountain but she didn't have any safety equipment on she was just climbing up there in fact it wasn't so much climbing she was running up the mountain and she was running so fast that when she got to the top of the mountain she just kept going in the air it was a bit like Jack and the Beanstalk but without the Beanstalk or the golden goose or the giants or Jack you know what it wasn't apart from that it was very much like Jack and the Beanstalk in a sense of you know going up into the sky and um, he thought to himself you know this would be really interesting if there was clouds there because then it, it seemed like there was maybe a big magical castle in the clouds but there wasn't because it was a really really clear day and you could just see this 97 year old lady just running in the air up continuously no broomstick I mean I'm, not that she was a witch I'm just saying there's, there's no broomstick she just and he thought to himself two things really well three things well probably a few things I mean we're all, we're all able to have more than one thought he thought if that's what one of my farts and he had to be honest with himself it wasn't one of his best ones it wasn't his best work you know if it were the painting he probably wouldn't have even put his signature on it you know, he didn't have that kind of pride towards that particular underpan adventure you know he didn't really wasn't particularly pleased with it but he was pleased with the reaction and the response which is the same as a reaction I suppose and he thought wow if one of my average farts and I you know his average what he really meant is it's like a frozen pie you know from the supermarket wasn't the top end wasn't like a really good brand but it wasn't like right at the bottom you know so it was it was edible but it wasn't yummy it wasn't one of his most delicious farts that's basically what what he thought anyway as he tried not to go back thinking about the cow on the table squirting out porridge he thought if I could help that lady who's fairly elderly at 97 I think it's fair to say that's uh, you know it's uh, well you, you're not going to see puberty again are you at that age it's, I suppose you could see childhood again in a sense but he thought maybe 
there's some kind of marketing opportunity here maybe I've discovered something special and he could it's as if he could smell success you know it's um, and he thought you know with the London Olympics coming up in 2012 because this, this is back before that time but not long before he thought with the Olympics coming up in London if I could find a way to transfer my energy giving power from inside me into athletes that are already fit super fit Imagine the results that could be had. So he got really excited at this point. So he jumped up and down a little bit. made sounds like that it's like as if there was a ferret in a cage running around doing a poo and he thought you know I need to test this because he went he went to the he went to the bank and he made an appointment with a business a business advisor in his local bank He said, the bank, he said, hello. The bank manager said, hi, is that Tom? And he just sat there, he, did, he just completely ignored the bank advisor. And he was the only one in the waiting room. He said, excuse me, are you Tom? Again, he just completely ignored it, didn't respond at all. And the bank advisor walked over and sat on his lap. And Thomas said, what were you doing? He said, oh, sorry. I didn't realise there was anyone here because I called out names and no one answered so I figured this, mu this chair must be empty so I thought I'd come and have a sit down Thomas said what? that's a really weird thing to say and the bank bank man said mm, there's probably weirder things that have been said already so far in this story and Thomas said yeah but that's not really not really your business because you're you're not a major part of this story you'll just uh, put it this way if I was gonna wash my hands you'd be maybe a tiny little bit of soap you wouldn't be the, all the soap that I'd use It'd be a little bit of soap. You'd maybe be enough to wash my little finger. And the bank, the bank man said, that's a very, very strange thing to say. And Thomas said, oh, I agree. And the bank man said, well, who are you then? And Thomas stood up. He twirled around. He took off his sombrero and he said, 
Juan Thomas. And the bank man said, Oh, nice to meet you, Tom. Thomas put down his telescope. That proved that he was not very happy. He hardly ever put it down. You could tell by all the food stains on it that he didn't like to put it down. Hardly ever. The amount of porridge stains that were on there. And he said, Please call me Thomas. Up and a ferret just did. Please call, call me. Please call me Thomas. And the bank man said, Why is that? And Thomas says, Because that's just my preferred name, you know. It's my father's name was Thomas. <laughs> he started coughing and the <coughs> the, the bank man. <laughs> <coughs> the bank man said, are you okay? He said, yeah, sometimes I cough. He said, oh. The bank man, the bank manager, man, business bloke said, well, that's interesting because we've got a good thing on at the moment. We're really looking for new businesses that are interested in offering some kind of bodily functions you know in order to make money there's a big market <laughs> out there and Thomas said oh it looks like you've got the cough as well and he said yeah a cough you've got and Thomas said yeah it's, uh, it's been happening now and then anyway sh should we get down to business and the bank man said well it's hot in here isn't it I think I'll have a drink of coke. <sighs> and Thomas said, that's quite a loud, loud way to drink, isn't it? And the bank man said, yes, I know. 
it's one of the things I'm most proud about I'm very pleased with that my new wife was very impressed that's why she wanted to marry me oh okay said Thomas right should we go into your office and discuss my business uh, idea now that we've both stopped stop coughing and the bank man said fine Thomas said what's your name then because you know my name and he said oh yeah I'm Mr. Bankman he said really he said yeah I know work in a bank named Mr. Bankman it's just one of those things it's uh, one of those coincidences he said, really? That's, that's amazing. He said, yeah, it's, uh, there's not really any backstory to it, really, that would make it interesting. He said, well, what did your dad do? I said, he was a bank, I worked in a bank. All right. Yeah, I don't know why he's, he's don't know why we have the name Bank Man, it seems weird. So what did your granddad do? Oh, he was, uh, he worked in a bank. So what, I mean, how far back do you, you know, if you, do you know about your family? And he said, oh, I'll go back hundreds and hundreds of years. They were all bank, well, you know, all worked in a bank. Apart from one uncle. And his name was Jack. What did he do? I said, I don't know. I think he, he sold knives. Uh, he used to be, he used to carry a big bag of knives around London. Never understood how he could sell them so late at night. But yeah, Tom said, oh, would you like an orange? And Mr. Bankman said, oh, that's very kind of you. And Thomas said, uh, I was hoping you are going to say no, so I don't actually have any. The bank man, Mr. Bank man said, why, why did you offer me one then if you didn't have any? Thomas said, well, I thought it'd be a really nice thing to do. Now, you ever, ever get one of those days where you just, just want to do nice things? You know, I'd like to offer you a car, but I don't have a car to give you so and that seemed like quite an unrealistic gift so I thought if I offer you an orange it'd be a bit more realistic and maybe you wouldn't want it if I offered you a car then you'd probably want it and that'd be embarrassing offering you something that I don't have to actually give you Mr. Bankman said, yeah, but you kind of just did. <sighs> he said, okay, fair enough. So then they sat down and Mr. Bankman said, so, Tom, Miss, what's your business idea? What's your business proposal? And Thomas said, well, here it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give my farts. I need the high level ones, you know, the, 
the best ones to the British team for the 2012 London Olympic Games so that they can basically win more stuff and the good thing about this it's totally legal Mr. Bankman, he stood up. He twirled around about four times. And he started bouncing around just on his left leg. And he says, you know what? That's a great idea. And Thomas said, well, thank you. Why, why did you spin around and start bouncing on your left why are you still bouncing on your left leg Mr. Bankman said well I was told recently that I don't show excitement some people can't read me they don't they don't know you know they, they don't feel that I'm excited about their business ideas so I decided to, you know, test some some ways of showing people my genuine feelings of excitement towards the, the amazing ideas that I hear, such as yours. And Thomas, he, he just, he said, wow. That's, that's brilliant, I'm really pleased that you shared that with me. Now, I need to cough. <coughs> and Mr. Bankman said, oh, bless you. And Thomas said, you don't, why are you saying bless you? You don't say bless you when someone coughs. It's when someone sneezes that you say that. He said, yeah, I know, but someone coughed the other day and they were coughing and I didn't, apparently I didn't give the, the correct response. I didn't give any kind of response and my manager told me off. I, had a cuss I said, what, what happened? Well, the customer was coughing and they just give me a, a business idea of theirs and they were coughing and apparently according to my manager I didn't respond in the correct way I said well, what was the correct way what well, well first of all the manager said I should have called an ambulance when they stopped breathing I said oh okay that's, that's probably a good idea anyway back to the uh, idea thing is Thomas we need to find a way to test this because you're telling me that the farts you know I need proof you know I, I, that this works you I need to what on earth is that smell <sighs> Thomas said well you needed proof there you are I know I've got the smell, but oh, that's awful. What? How could, oh, how, how's that going to help me? I'm not an athlete. He said, oh, it's okay. I bought some barbells with me. Always carry around barbells and dumbbells. A full gym, really. In a little backpack that I've got. So there you go. And just see, see how easy you can do some curls. Dumbbell curls and some bench presses and Mr. Bankman said wow it's so easy I wasn't able to do this one and a half minutes ago your farts really are magic 
you know, Thomas and Mr. Bankman both looked at each other at the same time smiled and joyfully shouted out Magic Farts That's the brand Magic Farts And they had to kiss each other It was a more platonic but it was just it was the right thing to do and they were so happy it was like a moment. I imagine it's the same as that that feeling when the pyramids were finally completed. You know, that feeling of accomplishment. So Mr Bankman said, Well, we need to find a way to test this on the actual athletes and Mr uh, and he said well what's the best way to do this and uh, he thought about this he thought well but the best way to do it is to get a bunch of athletes in a room a small room together maybe the hockey team the British hockey team or the British boxing team or something like that and you could have a tube so you could have a, you know the kind of thing you put over someone's mouth to help them breathe? You could have something like that to put it over your bum. And then have maybe eight or twelve tubes coming out of that. And then that could be over someone's mouth, over their, their nostrils. So when you let out a fart, a magic fart, everybody can have it at the same time and then they can go and test it really instantly go out on the hockey field or get in the boxing gym or weight weight lifting and just see how their level of strength and stamina and speed uh, increases and Mr Bankman said wow Thomas that is incredible and he said oh brilliant he said that this is really great and everything and you can have as much money as you want but can I ask you something Thomas said yeah well anything more he said why do you carry around a telescope he said do you want the real answer and Mr. Bankman said, yeah, that would be nice. He said, well, wherever I go, I have to travel around, you know, be traveling around trying to do, uh, sell this idea of farts and I've had to move away from where I used to live. And I miss my cow. So I like to just check up on my cow every now and then I just look through the telescope and I see her make sure that she's being treated nicely she's producing enough porridge for everybody and Mr Bankman said you know what that makes perfect sense to me it really does. It's it's amazing. And it's it's wonderful to actually meet somebody that that really knows their stuff, you know? I mean you came in here with an idea, but it wasn't just an idea. It was more than an idea. And you could you know some people they can't demonstrate a thought but you had everything there you had the idea you knew what you wanted to do and you could provide the proof instantly and he said I'm going to have another drink of coke 
just to treat my my tonsils. And Thomas said, "What? What do you mean, treat your tonsils?" <coughs> Mister Bankman coughed, and he said, "I think it's the dry weather, but I just coughed a little bit and." probably need to drink water but it's the other side of the, the room and I can't be bothered to get up and why is that Mr Thomas or Thomas not Mr Thomas it's Thomas isn't it he said uh, why is that Mr Bankman he said I don't you haven't got to, you haven't got to be formal here don't need to call me Mr. Bankman. Call me by my first name. Okay. What's your first name? Credit card. And they giggled. They giggled together. Thomas really appreciated that. He thought, oh, Mr. Bankman's got a good sense of humour. His surname's Mr. Bankman. And then his first name's credit card. And they went out for coffee. They held hands because it felt like the right thing to do. Sometimes after a business deal is finalized, human contact seems relevant sometimes not but in this case cuddling was the right thing for both of them it just felt right and they shared a burger had a great evening together Thomas made sure that his telescope was by his side the whole time because that is what this is about that's the that's the main philosophy behind you know the main meaning behind this story if you have a telescope with you at all times it means that you can see further in the distance than you would be able to if you didn't have that telescope and I think you'll agree that that is a, a worthwhile piece of advice information and transformational in fact in some ways it's a bit like the squirrel chasing the elephant and the elephants running and running the squirrels running after the elephant and the elephant keeps running and the squirrel keeps running and they get to an, a cliff's edge and the elephant's looking down He looks over to the squirrel. He says, Why are you chasing me? Why are you chasing me like this? I'm scared. I'm at the cliff's edge. Why have you been chasing me for miles and miles and miles? And the squirrel said, I 
have your watercraft. And the elephant said, "What? Why you want? Why do you want my watercraft?" And Scrooge said, "I don't really want your watercraft." The elephant got a little bit nervous now. He's saying, "Why? What? what what's going on?" And the squirrel said. been watching you from afar for quite some time and now that I've actually caught up with you I'd be embarrassed to really admit really kind of why I've been chasing you and the elephant said, it's okay, you can admit it, what, what's going on? And he said, well, to be honest with you, I thought you was another squirrel. Didn't realise you were an elephant. The elephant said, yeah, but look how much bigger I am than you. Yeah, I know. Oh, I thought you were really, really close. And they kissed. That's the end of this story. Good night.